Yeah. Yeah. All right, tell me, be right there. to my hotel room. We can get this thing straight. You're gonna be looking for a good time. I'm gonna be trying to read. You're gonna be looking for a good time, little girl. Brother here, he just gonna be trying to read. I ain't trying to give you what you want, baby. I'm not trying to give you what you want, little. Oh, my. I ain't trying to give you what you want. I'm trying to give you what you. <laughs> Turn up, y'all.
If you like to be alone, I like to watch television. If you like to be alone, yeah, 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 yeah. Want me to refer to you as you have a million names I heard. <laughs> a million names. Mm -hmm. Well, call me Melanie. Melanie. Because a lot of people they call me Mel B or Mel or Scary. But people I like, I like them to call me Melanie. Well, after this airs, everyone will call you Melanie. Nobody else is allowed to no. call me Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> Only me. Yes. Yeah. Um, what about you? What do I call you? Well, I go by an unpronounceable symbol, but you can call me Spud. Spud? As in potato spud? Or just Spud? Just Spud. Spud. Does it stand for anything? Mm hmm What? You know. Do I? Mm hmm I can't think. I can't think. I want to know, why me? Why have you chosen me to interview you? Because you're a pimp. Look at this watch. <laughs> He's calling me a pimp. <laughs> and I'm admitting it. Can you believe it? I'm actually admitting it. But yeah, you know, I followed your stuff. And you're going to be going on tour soon, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. And you've got your album out already. <laughs> tell, me, tell me a bit about that. The album? Yeah. Uh, with the New Power Generation. It's called New Power Soul. All right. It's um, spiritually political. Oh, you said that earlier. What do you mean by spiritually political? Um, we're getting closer and closer to the truth on the album. Good. So who influenced you on this album that you have out now? This one actually was influenced by the musicians that are on it, the New Power Generation. Uh, I change uh, musicians every two, three years or so. This will probably be the last band that I have for a while. I'm going to do some solo work after this but this record is um it's, it's one of the maddest records i ever got hooked up with freaks on this side and push it up and all that a lot had to do with the energy that we uh, experienced on the live shows we try to get into the album it's fun being in a situation where we don't worry about charts and singles yeah, and videos and all that now because it really does affect how you go into the studio what it is you put down on the tape. It's a brilliant album. Oh, it is. Properly has got that. <laughs> that thing, I can't explain it. That thing, you know, that kind of... And that's probably you all the best left unexplained. <laughs> all, of, all of it. <laughs> and what's the show going to be like? Tell us a bit about that. Oh, it's going to be sick. It's going to be so sick. And you've got dancers, you've got your band. Yeah, it's going to be so sick, so long. Just... Jamming. Yeah, funk ridden. Larry Graham is coming Don't with us. Chaka Khan. And Dougie Fresh. All right. It's going to be crazy. Brilliant. Looking forward to that. Mad sex. <laughs> but one thing that you started to do was sell your albums on the internet. Why, why was that? Uh, I like the uh, interaction between fans, the direct line. Uh, friends, I don't like to call them fans. That's short for fanatic. All right, yeah. 
because I was having a word with my drummer, We've got a drummer on tour with us, and he goes, at some point there's going to be no need for record companies. Everything is going to be done through the internet. You're well, going to be able to sell, download, everything is going to be through the internet. Do you, do you think that? Or? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Um, you know, record companies have their uh, purpose. Um, they're actually good for people who are just starting out and yeah. need a helping hand. And, uh, they, they um, serve a lot of functions, you know. But for somebody like me who writes a lot and records a lot and wants to release a lot, it's a detriment. So I stepped away. It doesn't negate going back and, and you know, doing something in the future. Because you've got your own label now, haven't you? Well, it's three letters, NPG, that we stamp on the product. But right. um, we're, we're musicians. We don't need to function as a record company person. All oh, right, so you do yeah. more kind of yeah. on a level. Yeah, and, and I don't wear a suit. So. No, that's good. So if I release some stuff, then I could go under your label, couldn't I? Mm. If I talked to you enough round it. This, as long as you own your work, it's cool, because that's what New that's Power Generation... Yeah, that's what New Power Generation is about, uh, ownership of the master, or else you're a slave. I really respect that, how you've done things, because you're your own person, yes. and you do what you want to do, and you kind of control a lot of things around you, which is very important, obviously, for you, and to get on working, but does that... Like, do you not feel strained by that, or does that... Well, um, more so than control, I think I'm trying to let things uh, evolve on their own, especially the music. Well, where do you get all this inspiration to do so much writing, so much music, to produce so many albums at such a good quality? Where do you get all that from? My gift comes from God. Yeah. Uh, so you reckon you were put here to do music? To... Yeah, to give back onto that gift, to, to stop recording, to to put a cap on your work and then put a boundary on it. it. Actually, for me, is to put a boundary on your gift that comes from God, and I can't do that. I write so much because I, uh, it is therapy for me. You're evolving your spirit, actually, every time you go back into the well and examine Better things. That's yourself. Yeah, so... Uh, the more I write, the more stuff I put out, the quicker I get to my destination. So do you think, so it is, your, your music is a soundtrack to your life, to your... To my psyche. Growing up. Yeah, I would think so. Wow. <laughs> On birthdays, you don't like birthdays? No. No, not into that? No. Um, we came here not knowing that we were going to die. Somebody told us that. Right? And if we never knew we were going to die... We wouldn't celebrate a birthday, because we... But isn't it nice to celebrate the day you was born? I'll celebrate the day I die. Oh, because you're going to move on to the next path in life? Yes. Who influenced you? Uh, Larry Graham, Shaka Khan. You've done, you've done a few performances with Shaka Khan, haven't you? Yeah. She's she just uh, finished a record with us, and we helped her with... She's a hard boss, but... Good. I like working for her. Good step, King. So what influenced you? Um, your singing style, your dancing style. You know you did. Your it was writing you. style. No, no, no. I was a dancer. This is like, you know, not a club dancer, but I was like Blackpool summer season dancer. Oh, I see. That's how I actually started getting interested in the music industry and things like that. Because you started in, in the music industry when you was about 15, didn't you? Um, actually, uh, 12. 12? Wow. Yeah. Not, um, not the professional side of it, but, um, I got my first band and, and started getting, uh, getting, uh, payment and snicker bars. Snicker bars? Yeah. <laughs> Why snicker bars? That's how we exchanged money back then. That was currency. Candy was currency. You can't sit still to your music. You have to get up and you either have to stamp your foot or you have to do something. And I like that about music. That's what music sh should make you feel. Mm. Like, I know there's a lot of music out there that is kind of makes you depressed and you kind of put on the thing and you want a mm. bit of a cry. Whereas your music, it gets you, but in, in a good way. And I think that's what music should always do. I think it should uplift. <laughs> Yeah. There's enough things to bring you down. We don't need to jack our music up that way, too. I mean, there's, there's still a way to uh, get anger and uh, 
even hate a cross sometimes in music. But uh, you have to resolve it. You have to show that it's useless to hold these ideas. There's a lot in the music. I, I'm uh, interviews are. Uh, this is cool because you and I are just hanging out talking. Yeah. In most interviews, they ask you questions. Uh, I find now people are trying to get me to say something ill about record companies all the time. I have no, oh, right. I have no yeah. bad feelings about record companies. I love record companies. They work. It is very obvious that they work um, by, the, by the consolidation of power. So uh, I'm just doing something else right now. So, and, and by being free and doing something else, it almost um, wakes you up to the fact that let, let them do their thing, you do your thing. Nobody's bothering me now. It's cool. But it's good you said you realize that because people, you know, they do want to kind of criticize or they do want to drag some badness like he said this to make like a good headline. But it's good that you don't rise to it. Yeah, we... Your opinion and that's that. Yeah, I, I, I don't look at myself through other people's eyes. I had an interesting discussion with Larry Graham and uh, a journalist upstairs about criticism of music. You know, if you're a true artist, you're using the gift you've been given from God. Yeah. And um, to uh, criticize a gift from God is sort of to criticize God. Yeah. Now, you can cut that any way you want, but <laughs> it's the truth. So, yeah. it, you know, I looked at the writer, I said, I wouldn't criticize your writing here. I'm not a writer. I don't write books. You know, I wouldn't. But the media is, I think, it's all a ball of all kinds of things. They get it wrong. They do get it wrong, but they just stir up people's attention. And well, think... you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be cooler to just tell people about things that you like and things exactly, you think have yeah. merit? Um, spending your, your life just criticizing another man's work and his gift is... But I think it's uh, sometimes it's easier for people to dwell on negative things rather than to look at the positive things because what you've done for a lot of people is you've influenced them. You've got, I mean, you influenced me a, a lot. Really, you really have done. I hope in a good way. You have. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're, you're not a pimp then. <laughs> no, I'm not. I might have a pimp watch, oh. but you know. Okay, now 1999, you had a song. Let's talk about this watch, though. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk about this song. <laughs> this song, 1999. I just asked him, right, if he will do 1999. I asked you. I'm looking at you now. All right? Mm -hmm. And you said... I said that you could do 1999 if I could redo one of you. Right. Which means... No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you, you can do anything you want. You're free to. Many okay. people have redone my songs. I find they're, they're doing them more now than ever. Now and are you flattered by that? Do you feel... What do you feel about <clears throat> that? Well, I, you know, if it's genuine and it comes from the uh, artist's heart, then I'm cool with it. If they're being egged on by their management and their record company... Then you say no. Well, uh, it's, that's not genuine. That's just trying to get another piece of... The action. The purple pie, yeah. I like you. you know, this is the best interview I've ever had. <laughs> You're just saying that. <laughs> no. You're very complimentary. No, I, I, I respect you a lot, and That's I think the there's a lot thing. of people out there. The highest thing you can pay people is much greater than money is a compliment. I appreciate it. All right, shall we do this game? What game? This game, and I told you about it earlier. Oh, oh okay. I ask you ten things, right? <laughs> and I tell you, the first thing that comes to mind. It's going to be just one word, so you can answer it in a sentence, or you can answer it in one word, or you can say pass. Right. First thing, cars. Corvettes. Jewelry. Jew. Time. Lie. Holidays. Holy days. Christmas. <laughs> Nimrod's birthday. What's that? Long story. Okay. Eyes. Mm, so? Underwear. Inconceivable. Food. Mighty. Music industry. Uh, owners. Sexuality. Spiritual. Animals. Uh, unconditional love. So I play it with you now. Go on then. Go on then. 
You see, I cheated because I wrote mine down for you, but you're just going to put them out of the... pluck them out of the sky. OK. Space. Spice. Lively. Cross. Cross. Mixed. When things go that way, they get kind of mixed up and you end up getting cross. No need to get cross, really. Mm -hmm. Time. Time. There is no time, really. Mm. She says we're in a pimp watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, one more. One more. Not too hard. Love. Love. Forever, it should be. And I like it as well, because she's singing about, you know, sex. So I like that. I do not. <laughs> Well, you know, you do. I do not. You do, like, as in, you know, the... You do. No, I don't. Well, what, what, what is it then? Well, mm. I see it as that. Maybe I'm, inter I'm interpreting it different. <laughs> I see it as that. Well, I don't want to ruin you, it for you. You, you tell me what it is Well, then, I don't so want to ruin me. it for you. No, go on, correct me, because oh, I like, it's you know, to hear. It's spiritual union for me. So you were saying about the noise, the gold plants are on, it's all very calming. Mm. I like that. Is that that's, it must be important to you. Yeah. Then you can hear. Oh, you've got doves up there, haven't you? Yeah, they're quiet. Have you, have you got names for them? Mm hmm What are they called? Majesty and Divinity. Do you breed them? Uh, no. <laughs> no, not by no. choice. They just, we looked up and there were eggs shaking. <laughs> that's a very pure thing to have around. Yeah. I've got a dove house. My doves are, I think, yeah, my doves are rare because they've got, like, a black tail. They don't look as pure and innocent as your doves. Mm. And what does this, you've got a carpet up there with words on. Can you tell me what that says again? That's probably best left between us, though, what the words OK. Say. I'm letting that a secret. Mm. <laughs> Lovely, though. And you can go for a walk yeah. and leave all this lot behind. your black limo? <laughs> Can I just say I didn't order that, all right? Uh, <laughs> that was not me. Any reason why it's that color? So nobody can see in, I guess. Hmm. Are you going to do any more movies? I'll do one with you. All right. What's going to be about? Who's going to write it? You. Me write it? Yeah. Why should I do a lot of writing? Whether it be good enough for a movie or not, I don't know. I'm being serious now, you know. Yeah, go for it. What does it have to be about? The truth, of course. You don't want to As in what, it. though? What kind? There's all kinds of truths in my little diary of things. There is only one truth. Which is? Don't worry about your bum. Brothers like that. Oh. Then you can go... Why don't you say to me, Romeo, Romeo, let down your hair. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Please. For that fantasy of mine. Well, is that your hair? No, it's not. It's false, but I can <laughs> pretend. Oh, okay. Romeo, Romeo, let down your... No, it's Rapunzel. Rapunzel, that's it. Rapunzel. I've had enough outside now. It's too hot. Oh, the sun's out now. I think you are lovely, you know. I do. I really do. I want to ask a question before you go about um, your reputation. Mm-hmm. Because you, you've been very cool. You've been very quiet. Yeah. And you're not scary at all. No. What's up with that? I think a lot of people, they like to pinpoint it because I am, I have got my own, own opinion. I do like to say exactly what I think. And I think people are not ready for that sometimes. It's like they'd rather have somebody safe and somebody quiet who will go, yes, 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 and agree to everything, rather than somebody who's got their own opinion and their own set of morals, their own ideas, their own picture. And I think for some people that's frightening. <laughs> that's why they criticise you and make out as any something that you're not really. You find that people live through you, and then when you don't act like they expect you to, then 
I don't know what you mean, actually. Then you're the bad one. Yeah. Melanie bad. <laughs> well, regardless of the watch you wear, you're black Luma. You ain't so bad. You ain't so scary. No, I'm not. And I think you person. are lovely. Thanks. You are. I was saying earlier, a lot of people, they get the wrong impression of you, or they've written the wrong impression, or they speak of the wrong impression of you, and that's their own ignorance. They don't... They should have a more open mind, because I think you're yeah. lovely. Yeah. Get it from the horse's mouth. Come on, walk to your car. <laughs> Just stop on over to my hotel room. We can get this thing straight. You're gonna be looking for a good time. I'm gonna be trying to read. You're gonna be looking for a good time, little girl. Brother here, he just gonna be trying to read. I ain't trying to give you what you want, baby. I'm not trying to give you what you want, little. Oh, I ain't trying to give you what you want. I'm trying to give you what you. <laughs> Turn up, y'all.